This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. Section 3, we're going to look at savings income and dividend income, which will form part of our main pro forma in one of those columns. So, savings income, interest on income received, gross, it's always received gross now, without any deduction at tax at source. Okay, always gross, no tax deducted at source. From banks, building societies, things like that. Um, be careful for the exempt incomes that we looked at earlier. It mentions there, it's unlikely that you will get government securities or corporate bonds. You're really looking at bank and building society interest. And a lot of the examples we're going to look at today um, also just include banks and building societies. And it's what you actually receive in that tax period. Do you remember from the 6th of April to the 5th of April? It's what you actually receive in that period of time. Same with the dividends. And dividend income is received from shares that are held in limited companies. And again, that is always received gross. Now, working out the tax. Um, taxable interest received from banks and building societies, you put in the savings income column. Um, any deductions in the income tax computation, the personal allowances and reliefs, remember, always first from the non-savings income, then the savings, then the dividend, top slicing. And that's why you have the columns as they have. Okay, top slicing it talks there. Um, tax deducted at source, we've dealt with that. And again, just to repeat, these are the rates. Okay, now, as well as these rates, the basic rate of tax, which is 20% on the first 37,700, anyone over that pays high rate tax of 40% on their income up to 150,000. And from 150,000 or more, you pay tax at what's known the, at the additional rate of 45%. Where will you find these figures? In your tax rates. What are you going to do? You're never going to guess. You're always going to check. Okay, now there are additional rates of tax. Okay. So savings income, highlighting here, there is a 0% rate first. Uh, but, okay, so that's the, that's the rule. However, there is a but, and you'll find in tax, there's always a rule and then a but. The starting rate only applies where saving income falls within the first 5,000 of taxable income, which means if you have a job with 10,000 pounds, income this doesn't apply okay so if non-savings income exceeds five thousand so you have a job that with ten thousand then the starting rate does not apply savings income in excess of the savings nil rate band you've got there will be taxed at 20 percent if they're basic rate taxpayers it will be 40 percent if they are high rate taxpayers and again 45% if they are high rate, um, additional rate taxpayers, and they earn over £150,000 a year. So that's your first additional rule regarding savings income. There is a 0%, but only if the savings income falls in the first, falls in the first £5,000. Rule number two. There is a nil rate, savings income nil rate band of £1,000. And for high rate taxpayers, it's only £500. And additional rate taxpayers don't benefit from this rule. Now, these rules are easier when we do numbers than they are to remember. <laughs> so we're going to put them into practice in a minute. So that will help you to understand it better. So two rules. One, there's a 0% rate. And then there's this savings income nil rate band. 
of a thousand pounds for basic for basic rate taxpayers and five hundred pounds for additional tax rate payers. Dividends: the first two thousand pounds of any dividend um, is zero percent. Okay, regardless of what rate they are. Okay, regardless. Now, if you then have dividend income over £2,000, so the first 2000 is tax-free in effect, then you will pay tax at peculiar rates, all right? 8.75% if you're a basic rate taxpayer. 33.75% if you're a high rate taxpayer. And 39.35% if you're an high rate pay, additional rate okay what's good about this these are in the tax rates at the front of the exam okay so what are you going to do you're going to check them every time you don't have to remember those percentages all you have to do is remember to check them in the exam check them at the rates at the front so we're going to do uh, billy okay example number two now, Billy has, Billy has uh, trading profits of 27,500 and bank deposit interest of 10,000 pounds. Okay, so that's, that's Billy's situation. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna do Billy's tax computation. So I'm gonna get a nice blank piece of paper here because I need the lots of columns. So always with this try and put a heading in so billy tax computation twenty twenty two twenty three headings across the top non savings income savings income and a total column at the end Okay, so what we're going to do now is copy the question into the answer. You're allowed to copy this. Okay, so we have uh, trading income. And his trading income was £27,500. Okay, you also have some bank deposit interest. Ten thousand pounds, which goes in this column, which means he has total of thirty-seven and a half thousand. Always nice, neat, well presented. Now, obviously, in an exam, you'll be doing this on a computer, but the process is. Oh, look what I've done! Look what I've done there! Oh, where's my eraser? Silly me, put that in the wrong column. Okay, let's do it properly. Where's the pen? There it is. 10,000. Silly me. There we go. Label. Total. Income. Okay. So we've copied the question into the answer correctly. All right. So what we're going to do now is to deduct from that the personal allowance which is 12,570 and it, we check that in the rates and it always comes off the non-savings income first okay there you go. That is his taxable income. Okay, so that's the first half of the pro forma. Now you notice I've double underlined it so that I don't end up looking too far up the computation and adding these figures onto the bottom. Okay, so that's the first bit. Now we're going to work out his income tax. Okay, 
Okay, so we have non-savings income first. We always do that first. And we can see from there it's 14,930. So that's going to be taxed at 20%. Which is two thousand nine hundred and eighty-six pounds. Then we've got savings income. Now, because the savings income doesn't fall within the first five thousand pounds, we can't have the zero percent. But what we do have is the savings nil rate band of one thousand pounds which again, it is at 0%, but we'll see how it's, it's kind of at a different 0%, but it is 0%, okay. So that's there, because it's rule number two, not rule number one. Now, again, safety net thing. That is the total amount that we need to be taxing. Okay, we've already taxed one uh, fourteen thousand nine hundred and thirty. We've already put in the savings nil rate band of a thousand. So the balancing figure, okay, is nine thousand, and that will be taxed also at twenty percent. Why? Because he is still a basic rate taxpayer. It hasn't gone above that thirty-seven thousand. That comes to eighteen hundred pounds. So his total tax liability is £4,786. That's his tax liability. OK, let's do example number three. We have to calculate Billy's income tax liability, assuming the bank interest is actually 25,000 and not 10,000 as it was in the first question. So, at the back of your notes, you will find the answers. So that's the one that we've just done. OK, that's the one that we've just done, that I've written out for you. But if we look at example number three. OK, so again, we have a heading. We've got but labels across the top. We have the pro forma down the side, all nice, neat and well laid out. So this is the same as it was before. Now his... Bank interest is 25,000. It's been added into the savings column, totaled up. We take the personal allowance off the non-savings income first. Total everything up. Don't forget the labels. All right. So that's the first half of the computation. The second half of the computation is the tax calculation of income tax. We always start with the non-savings income, 14,930 at 20%. Now, the total income that's taxable for this individual now is 39,930. So he's now a high rate taxpayer. As such, that rule, number two, he's now only entitled to £500 of his savings nil rate band. Which means that up to there is basic rate. So if you add all that up, it comes to 37700 Leaving us with this figure of 2,230 at high rate at 40%, add all the income up. That's his tax liability, 8,332.
It says at the bottom there, Billy is a higher rate taxpayer and therefore has a savings income nil rate band of £500, as I explained. And that counts towards the basic rate tax threshold of £37,700. OK, so moving on. We have here example number four and example number five. Molly receives bank interest of 22,500 and no other income. That's all she gets, okay? Which means that we need to think about this 0% starting rate band um, because um, her non-savings um, um, income. So let's have a look. Let me find the blank page. So we're doing now example number four, which is Molly. Just checking I've got the right name. Okay, Molly has a bank interest. So she's only got investment income. She's only got savings income. Example number four. Okay, so she's got bank interest of 22,500. Okay, so we can deduct from that her personal allowance of 12,570, means that she has taxable income. of 9,930 pounds. There's no need, because she's just the only income, there's no need for all the three columns. Um, this is this is the only income that she has. Okay, so her tax liability she can have the first 5,000 of that income at 0%, which is that rule number one. She can benefit from that starting rate. It's called a starting rate. Starting rate. Because she has no non-savings income. Then, because she's still only a basic rate taxpayer, so both of these, so these, this is now the savings nil rate band. So you can see both of these rules are now applicable to this individual in this situation. That's also at 0%. So when I said it was a different 0%, that's what I meant. That's the starting rate, first 5,000 if there's no other income. And then you get the savings nil rate band of 1,000. Let's do the safety net. So if we take six off that, so that's £3,930, which would be taxed at 20%. So, no, no, £786. So, £786 is her tax liability. Okay. So, that's a situation where you've got both of those rules in the same situation. I think what we've tried to do with these examples is to get you to see the various different types of situations that you could get. These could be the part of the multiple choice question. So any of these little examples could be in um, section A of an exam with a multiple choice. And then you have to work it out and then you've got four numbers to choose from. It might be in the section B section where you've got a scenario where she, you've got various different things. And one of the questions is, if she only had bank interest, how much would the tax be on that? That could be the same sort of thing. Okay. 